All right. Um, so uh, now we're sort of at the end of uh, our schedule of broadcasting uh, with our key speakers. Um, now it is my time to shine, uh, to touch on a few uh, matters of business and ad hoc things. Uh, so some of you will know, most of you will know, um, that uh, ooh, 17, 18, the beginning of that financial year, or 18, 19, 18, 19, um, there was a, a review of the State Records Act uh, that was kicked off, um, that was being managed by Create New South Wales um, under Minister Harwin and Minister Dominella. Um, at the time. So I thought we'd just give a little bit of an update on that. Um, so it was all uh, a little bit disrupted um, with the recent administrative change um, after the last election. Um, so really the history here is that, um, you know, over the, over the course of a year or so, everything was stood up, governance, etc. cetera. Um, and there was an extensive consultation with, um, you know, key subject matter experts and uh, members of the community and public officers uh, within New South Wales, um, which generated a very lengthy issues paper um, that sort of cut across, uh, I guess, more traditional issues with the Act as it currently stands. And then I guess Minister Dominello's perspective was, um, you know, how do we ensure that, you know, any revision to the Act ensures that it's, uh, you know, robust in the face of digital disruption. Uh, so there's a, there, was, there was quite a lengthy issues paper uh, that was generated. This issues paper was then delivered to um, Minister Harwin and Minister Dominello. Um, and the outcome of that was that a, a policy paper was um, produced, which contains some proposed outcomes. So not specific changes to the legislation, but changes to outcomes that we should see um, that may be delivered through changes to legislation or not. Uh, so that, in October, um, sort of came out of there. The Minister's Office then submitted it to the Premier's Office for endorsement um, and a Cabinet review. Um, so that's where it is at the moment, in November, that's where we are. Um, and then coming out of that, December through February um, is likely to be a three-month period of public consultation. Um, that is as far as we can see down the timeline at the moment. Um, so this is the update that we have, I guess. Does anyone have any questions about where the review is at? No, I think that's all fairly straightforward. Um, but I guess come December, uh, when Minister Harwin announces the public consultation, the policy paper will be out and free for members of the public to consult on, which will also include everyone in this room. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, and now just some uh, core updates from the government record keeping team. So for all some time, there's been a glossary of record keeping terms, um, which is fairly fundamental um, as, a, as an aid. So we've worked to update those in the face of current archival practice and the digital environment. So it's just an FYI that the glossary has been updated um, if you require it for anything. Um, and then, in addition to that, there's a new section on on the int on the internet uh, on our web page um, for resources relating to the implementation of the recommendations from the Royal Commission into institutional responses to child sexual abuse. So this has been um, quite a large piece of um, quite a large focus for the government record keeping team, you know, uh, and it's I mean several years old at the moment, but providing advice to the relevant government departments um, around how to implement and, and further comply and, and make sure that everything is taken care of um, when it comes to the recommendations that came out of that final report. Um, you know, and the, the report's recommendations, you know, covered, you know, record keeping quite comprehensively, but for public and for private concerns. So, um, so we're working through that. So there's a new section on the, um, on the internet page that deals with that and houses a lot of the collateral that we've produced um, to aid what I've just discussed. Um, so there'll be a, yeah, so there's a, a Royal Commission's box just on there. Um, there's also links to guidance developed by the Council of Australasian Archives and Records Authorities, which is CARA, on identifying and retaining records which may become relevant 
um, to actual or alleged incidents of child sexual abuse. So we've tried to um, just put everything all in one spot so it's easy to find. Um, and there's information there, as I touched on before, for non-government organisations as well, including leaflets for raising awareness and, you know, generally how to how to manage um, records for at-risk individuals. Um, yeah, so and, and I suppose there's, you know, other Royal Commissions that have been announced, so we'll look at, at building that out, pending the outcomes um, and reports. So... Uh, I guess this is more relevant given uh, our DCS colleagues' presentation from earlier today around Office 365. So uh, they took us on, or we joined them on that journey, taking a look at things, uh, met with a lot of uh, different stakeholders, whether it be vendors from Record Point, Record 365, um, and spoke to some people at Microsoft, shouldn't leave those people out. Um, and as part of that, and as, and as part of responding to you know, the, the feedback around, you know, how do you handle a behemoth like Office 365 when there's an infinite number of variables and different organization sizes and all the rest of it. Um, we take an attempt to produce some guidance that is using the information that we have at hand. Obviously, it's a continuously changing uh, platform and product, um, you know, that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different aspects to it. When you say Office 365, what are you really talking about? Is it in cloud, in the premise? Um, you know, what's my implementation? What have I picked? How is everything configured and integrated? And what's my legacy landscape look like? You know, it can be quite complicated. So, you know, it refers to, you know, online subscriptions and applications. So we provided a... Um, so we assessed it against the checklist for assessing business systems, which is something that um, we've had on the website for some time. You know, and so it's not it's not an easy thing to deal with. We've done our best. As I said, the platform continues to evolve. So we recommend New South Wales public officers use this guidance in assessing and understanding um, the capabilities that currently exist within the Office 365 environment. Um, once again, it's not prescriptive. It's high level and you really need, you know, it's a, it's a best efforts, you know, when it comes to the amount of record keeping you'll be able to build in and configure and the environments and legacy applications you can do without or can even remediate. Um, you know, it'll be, a, it'll be a very different journey for everybody, you know, and I mean, just looking at that, I, it's ridiculous, the level of applications and connectors and all the rest of it. Um, so there is a link there, which you can't click on, but it's on the website. If you can't find it, contact us. We'll copy the link. So in further news, um, and we had some feedback on this last time. So we had um, we had a digital records advisory group uh, some time that was aligned to a um, to a strategy to uh, to the future proof strategy. Um, which was really looking at, you know, how do we make sure that, you know, all of our guidance and processes and all the rest of it um, meet the requirements of the stakeholders for future digital disruption and all the rest of it. We closed that strategy down as it achieved the goals that it had set out to complete. Um, and we've then replaced the Digital Records Advisory Group with um, the aptly named PSAC, uh, Public Sector Advisory Committee. Uh, so it's a little bit more generic. Um, because it should cover everything, not just uh, in the digital space. Um, so this is a crucial part of ensuring um, engagement with public officers. Um, so the committee will be an important mechanism for consultation and advice and feedback um, on the initiatives that we're proposing, um, you know, and, and the direction that we should be taking. Uh, so several initiatives um, on our operations plan this year um, are aimed to go to PSAC next year, um, and they you know, really are about taking a, a step change in, in what we're doing. Um, that we, there should be components from the legislative review once they're, you know, announced and they've actually formed. So, you know, some point after that public consultation is finished. Um, but we've also got items looking at um, our regulation framework and improving, you know, how disposal is documented and recorded and how it's accessible and, you know, so it's not just in a Word document or a PDF, you know, what are the other ways of delivering the same information and understanding your obligations, really. Um, yeah, so it's there to, to provide advice and feedback to collaborate with us and share experiences. Um, and then 
just at the bottom there, a reminder about making sure you're prepared for a disaster. So unfortunately, over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been contacted by a number of clusters and agencies around disasters, both uh, proximal and um, a little bit long in the tooth, uh, that require remediation. And it's a one it's not a one-size-fits-all process to move through that. Um, you know, we've had clusters impacted by recent bushfires that have swept up whole, you know, regional storage areas, um, you know, people affected by flood, that sort of thing. So it's really just a reminder to maybe take a look at, you know, make sure you know where everything is, make sure that you've got, um, make sure that you've, your storage conditions meet the requirements under the standard, etc. And if you're affected by a disaster or have any questions, please contact us. Um, and then lastly, I'd like to thank all of the speakers, including those who have already left, Ian, Wendy, Gillian, or, and I think Narelle's still here somewhere, maybe she left, um, and Emma, thank you very much. Um, thanks for attending today's forum. Uh, we're actually running a little bit ahead of time, which is nice to see. Uh, the next Record Managers Forum will be in 2020. Dates will be advised soon. And please have a happy, safe, secular, mid-financial year break. Yeah.